afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hirovsreich, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to have one versus one on Holot Nifana. Again, we shall be watching Bite and Hold here, fighting for the Soviet Union with advanced forfeit already here chosen, rushing ahead for the sixth tank. Call a task with clearing up this area. Being used as a staging ground here by. Paul AD fighting for the Reich, for the Wehrmacht, for the Panzer Division Strachwitz. And we've got T-55, of course, up machine guns, strafing guns, all that sort of support here available for the 6th tank core. Paul on the other has got mechanized nice assault, close air support, and in comment, we got guys on the way arriving for the Reich. Also, a notable amount here of mine bulletins here for Paul AD. Nothing for his infantry, though. Pioneers moving ahead, they can use rushing for the building. Looks like in this case the pioneers realize they can't make it and pull away. Set wings reconnect there. Grenadiers heading north. Paul Lady, or bite and hold by the way. Biting very aggressively here towards the center here, trying to basically deny munitions and otherwise point in otherwise apply pressure to Paul Lady while further troops arrive up. And noting here by the way, very aggressively in a sense, also laying down some sandbags already here, taking no chances and already preparing a future battlefield here against the fascist foes. But at the same time, no, it's not quite finished, so the opponent can't just use it, it'll be something you can sort of finish up rapidly and then use against his opponent. Also, vital to note here, the engineers continue to another building here. Got two grenadiers, three grenadiers here for Paul. Conscious moving ahead there. More conscripts arriving there, and we've got more sandbags up here. But though, perhaps not so well angled. Here we go again. Oh, this time just holding up behind the tractor. It is, looks like they'll shift away. Again, no, he never quite finishes up. Again, that's basically also an old trick that was used by the Brits in the first coming. Here's the same with trenches, basically just sort of almost finish it. And that way the opponent can't use it. But you can always ready to finish it and then use it against your opponent. Of course, another option would have been, you know, just bring up to engineers after they finish it and lay down some barbed wire. But as we noted, the engineers are far, far away. Enjoying the day inside this hut. Going for the cop on there. Paul shifting away though of course at the same time his cop's going to be cut there. And we got mines going up here by the back door. Quickly they need to leave a little surprise for the fascists. A happy little surprise for that. There you go finding for the cop point comes. Ah looking rather unfortunately because they got rather close to the contract, the contract taking advantage of that thing and they are taking lots more engineers are arriming in. Gonna just flying in from the south though that could turn things in the top favour for Paul as the same time guys are getting overwhelmed. Not getting more guys on MD4 to here. What is he thinking? What is he thinking? Is it a sniper here? There we go. We are, in fact, seeing a sniper there for Paul. Trench retreating, but this is the country will push away the engineers left behind. Ultimately, forced away from here as the country will simply too much to go back to see a wipe there. That would hurt him. That would hurt him. That would hurt him quite a bit. That early into the match, lose a full gun. It looks like they do manage to pull away here. Pioneers moving in as well. Engineers forced away. Some rather aggressive play here from both sides already so early into the match. And we're seeing more conscripts here. Looks like the tank. Core is rushing as many units or uh, infantry as possible, though technically tank cores were never that heavy on infantry. In fact, most of a tank core were in fact tanks. Fun fact there. Tank cores weren't really a combined arms formation, mind you. Not like say a Western armored unit or a German Panzer DB Scholl. That was actually the Soviet mechanized core you'd be looking at, which actually had less tanks though than a tank core. So fun facts there. Countries there coming to fire though from Grenadier. Pioneers are taking heavy damage at the concept of firing. Gunners moving up. Pioneers might need to get the hell out of there. Down to one man. Nine. Zurück. Oh dear, lost a pioneer that early on. We got a bunker going up the base. Then we got the sniper moving ahead here, and we got encirclement chosen, which by the way does also offer up sprint, which could for him use to use the sniper a bit more aggressive alarm to get out of a unpleasant situation there. But encirclement chosen. Countries are taking damage, and the Panzer Division Strachwitz, by the way, was actually an ad hoc formation formed out of two Panzer Brigades, actually. Fighting in the Baltics. One SS Brigade and one the 101st Panzer Brigade, actually. Little fun fact there. The snipers there getting, well, off some shots there on the conscripts. Molotov's going off this, so bite and hold further, adding to his infantry force. Got a bit of pressure down south there, but certainly that loss of a pioneer early on will hurt Paul a bit. 
He's not getting further and saying not a sniper either. Of course, right now he could actually try and aim for some stormtroopers, which certainly add in some slightly heavier infantry for his side, which could then be f upgraded further with assault rifles. Would actually give him quite a bit of firepower there versus Spite and Hold early on. Of course, I have to see where this actually goes. But currently, I mean, if you look at sort of the force composition between the two sides, I mean, he is a bit behind there, and certainly Python Hold will be able to sort of more aggressively push. But there you go, Stormtroopers arrive. Four vets later. Moving hit there for the Reich. And they can be upgraded there with Assault Rivals or Punch Effects. It's so now going up to support the gun, getting off a shot there on Fedorov, piercing his head. Because they will have to be forced away. Paul not really having a series of good engagement here versus Bite and Hold. We're certainly biting and holding so far. Port there being secured. You got mines going up here. I know, you got, you know, Paul is spreading out his forces rather thin yet at the moment. It's certainly a bit risky here. It's a bit risky. Stormtroops there opening up on the conscripts, getting off a bit of an ambush. Now they still need to be careful. 4 6 4 6. Storm to doing what the cameras are constantly got a multi going off there. Of course, he could sprint away here to the next piece of cover. That's it, no. More Molotovs here, by the way, from Bite and Hold, popping off several of them versus Paul AD's Stosthuppen. There we go, forced away. Gunnadier spinning up. Not really looking good here for Paul early on. Losing a lot of territory, and he lost his sniper, actually. Looks like he tried to sneak up here, that did not really work out. A few rapid shots there took his life out in that gut. Paul might have got to be a bit more careful there. But that's definitely going to hurt quite a bit as well. I mean, if you can get a bit of munitions there, he might be able to rapidly equip these with some assault rifles, which might allow him to sort of quickly turn things around a bit more in his favour. Maybe. We'll, of course, have to see. But so far, his force composition tested versus Biden holes rather has had some issues there. No raw has led to a rapid loss of territory. Now we're just seeing these being popped out instead. Pardon me, would think an MD42 position correctly could do a bit there to sort of stall Biden holds advances, but so far Biden holds those making good progress. He's got most of the map, and he's soon able to actually, in fact, he can right now consider upgrading his conscript service submachine guns, the PVS H41. The submachine gun of choice for the Soviet infantrymen, though also used by the German infantry, if they could get away with picking up. In fact, the Germans captured tons of them, and in fact was able to convert about one to two million of them to use German ammunition, which ought to say something about how many they capture, but also you know something about how the Germans thought about them. Stormtroopers here. Can get some assault rifles there if he wants. And there you go, PBH 41's here. Dominating up close there versus Stormtroopers. Rapidly sending them running. More subsingers than around there for Bite and Hold. Further increasing his engine high power. We got more Molotovs going. He's really fond of using Molotovs aggressive versus the opponent. Certainly, it forces Paul to sort of shift his infantry and can also deny cover. So, in that regard, you know, it's not a bad idea at all. Use the subsingers guns to basically just dominate wherever he is. They're slacking something that can keep them at bay, like, say, well, a machine gun. Comes there, taking a bit of fire. A sort of could be equipped here, I and mean, he's got the munitions now. He has tacked out though, but no like to make a nice company so far. A bit further multiple together. The Russians might have flown a bit too close this time to themselves. In this case, he does not seem to have really done anything for them. Go. We do believe we have the assault rifles there, the Sturmgewehrs. Can it be reinforcing still? No Pioneer, still not a good graph of the map. And we got a mechanized armor company up here for bite and hold. What could he be planning with that? Katusha, SJ76, we got another pair of Stormtroopers here by the way arriving. Oh, quickly ambushing the unit there on retreat, wiping them out. Nicely done there by Paul, nicely done. Got a bit of a squad up there against bite and hold which should help him a bit at the same time we got the counter attack going up here now with a bit more firepower and that's a bit more well, overall punch versus bite and hold troops there we go Sturmgewehrs 
Stormtroopers need to fall back. Countries rushing in in large numbers. They're supported by several engineers. Now looks like he's added another one there. And there you go, some machine guns added in for a bit of extra fun there. They're quick retreating once the Stormtroopers have said packing. Of course, one thing he then could consider is, by the way, upgrading the other Stormtrooper unit here. Now, of course, one thing to consider, of course, is you know, using sprint to quickly get in there, closing the distance. In this case, the gun is took the fire, allowing the Stormtroopers to get in unscathed. They might be able to finish off those conscripts. If you can do that, that would definitely help him out. If you can get, you know, two wipes rapidly on bite and hold. Oops. There we go. That's two country squads wiped in short succession here by Paul E.D. That should actually give him a bit of sort of time to get back, though, of course, with whatever's coming here. Of course, that might soon change again. Of course, you could also use tactical advantage. Well, I suppose you would say, you know, consider upgrading the other Stormtrooper squad as well, either with more assault rifles or puncher sex to sort of help deal with any early vehicles since you would actually be a bit vulnerable to that. No further tech up there. And of course otherwise you know consider using tax of and it does give you quite a boost there to your assault rifles. Which can be useful for some quickly wipe an otherwise full unit. Go engineers and now a bit of all there. But Paul now really getting back on his feet there again, those two wipes, they did a lot of good for him. Took a bit of win there out of bite and hold sails. Though bite and hold is certainly not about to give up. Using his assault formations there to rapidly advance through. Get off some Molotovs and they're not... Oh, there we go! Surprised by the back door, blew up some Grenadiers. So you got the pioneers with so far not really using storms from nothing, getting the conscripts. Of course, thanks to the subsinger there, the assault rifles will enjoy a definite advantage there at range. No, he's moving down here. Maybe to support down, maybe get another wipe there. That could actually work out. In particular, used tax advantage to increase the firepower. Light machine guns up there. And there we go, another unit wipe now. Biden hold might have gotten a bit too overconfident there, maybe underestimating Paul here for a bit, by the way. Paul is getting off several wipes, and that's three countries wiped. Mine off the demon civil storm to his debt in the wake. Heinz and Helmut did not quite enjoy that. So now the pressure is a bit more here against Spite and Hold, who's doing what he can though. Of course, at the same time, he has to be careful about upgrading all for something gun because it does mean that as range, Paul will have a great advantage. And will make things much harder for him to actually defend with. I mean, something gun troops not that great defenders, particularly not versus all these troops. Here, the tax advance could maybe cut apart those countries out in the open, but looks like he did not go for it. Even then, though, with the heavy cover here supplied for his opponent without a bar wire, I mean, he does stand a good chance here of sort of winning this engagement with the engineers flying down from the church. And rapidly moving towards race, should we get a mortar off there? Making the cover not really working, but still, he's denying a lot of fuel here to his opponent. Good job there, Fort Bite and Hold, and that's definitely something that Paul needs to rectify rapidly. At least probably considering a fuel cache. Plenty of resources here for Bite and Hold, and he's going for a Katusha rocket launch to help deal with the infantry. Not bad, not bad. You got minefields here going down. Using, of course, his bulletin to make that a bit cheaper. He's not going to see a huge saving with just one fuel there. Even with three bullets, and it's not going to make that much of a difference. But on the interest of the match, I can go for the car one again, trying to deny his opponent fuel, which is uh, not a bad idea either. Stormtroopers moving out again. No sign of an upgrade for these gentlemen. Though he definitely should consider it. Again, either assault rifles or maybe a pantry, just sort of to help the vehicles just a bit. And soon Biden Hope will actually be able to get in the T-45 to maybe you know, support whatever he gets in for some of the Katrusha. Paul making some aggressive moves here. Manufacturing capability and this is overall not really good in getting there for Biden Hope using just some machine gunners at that range. I mean, the rifle grenade is something that's easy to force him up. Molotov here to break off the assault and deny cover. In this case, it looks like Paul wasn't quite between, but there we go, we got the flank. Tax of assault could maybe finish off the rest. Maybe not, but I'll wait. We'll have to see, of course, it works. If he does get them wiped out, that's going to be another heavy blow there to bite and hold. Close there. Very close. Had he maybe used tax advantage, he could have done it. 
But there you go. You got the Katusha out here though, adding a bit of rocket fire there to bite and hold of first strike. Did very little. Panzer Strike here an option, but again he could be saying up there for the assault rifles. The Sturm Gewehrs. Right, they're being secured. He's actually teched up. This looks like he might be aiming for armor, though, again, due to the way he's sort of controlled the map, it's not really a strategy that might have worked out quite as he wanted. And overall, would have been a not really called a rush at this point, though, still, it seems to be what he's playing at in a sense. But he should be able to get up some armor, and then maybe out some armor after that. You should definitely consider it, because he'll soon be hit with Soviet armor, supported by Katrusha. And we got more light machine guns. He seems uninterested in upgrading the second storm to the squad. Really think he should consider it. Because either way, it's something they could benefit from. Again, either tax advantage overall, I think, is an absolutely wonderful ability. Or for the for the Patrick, but also armored vehicle detection, which might make it harder for Brighton Hole to flank in, for example. And use a bit of surprise on his armor. Might be sitting with a minefield. Good job there by Brighton Hold. Could, by the way, also consider getting himself a fuel cat to speed up his fuel income there. For more glorious Soviet armor. Stormtroops moving out. Smaller column there. Oops. Well, that's not quite working out there. My apologies there. There we go. T-35 there arriving for him. Kind of just push away up north. Engineers holding up there, but they're not really going to be much of a match of the versus the Stormtroopers. So not with the assault rifles there. Quick work and strike there. And they've got engineers rushed off the field. Keep it from them moving in. Another barrage here going down the retreating storm troops in as the T-55 sets in there. We could see some heavy casualties there inflicted upon all. Panzerfaust the there. Pushing around there. Paul being pushed back again. He is getting a Panzer IV though. That's, even that's going to struggle a bit though versus the T-3045. And bite and hold is quick to replenish the losses he has suffered here. Bunnies versus this bit of a standoff there, but that's not really going to work out for them. T-35 they're rapidly repaired, using engineers, but of course you'd also use just conscripts and such part of advanced warfare, conscript repair kits. And of course still some time off. A pantry trick would be a good intermediary choice there for Paul, sort of help with the enemy armor. Would be something recommendable. Contrast from the from the north. And there we go, we got some stormtroopers heading southwards. They might try and get around here. Pressure up the south, south further. The T-55 fire there, Contrast moving in. Lapsing the fire from the nearby building. Quick multi there versus the Grenadier. And there we go, Panzer can't find the immobilizer pull. Sitting south, TFO rapidly escaping in the face of the Panzer IV. I mean, he probably could have won that one. Direct slug out, maybe. Maybe. By the way, though, Rocket Strike going down, hitting with the Stormtroops down south. They're going to be quickly rushed off the field again. Brian Holt might want to get his Katushi just a bit closer. I mean, he's firing at such a distance. Shots tend to sort of land all over the place without sort of much, much having a chance of hitting, which really means. Needs to hit sort of a concentrated force, but Paul's not really concentrated. So for the Katusha payoff, he really needs to sort of get a bit close. I mean, of course, he might get flanked and all that, but otherwise, I mean, he's not really going to get much out of it. So, in that regard, there's a few problems there. Close of actually, three of the storm tools, that's definitely going to make them much more lethal there versus enemy infantry. Panzer 4 moving about. And we got a pack 40 there on the way. 
So he's been t back checked a bit there. He could have maybe then also considered getting a half drag up, sort of helping maintain a field presence. Looks like he's just getting lots of like machine gun upgrades. He should begin though preparing for the arm. In a pack 40 is alright, but you know, again, I do feel a Patrick would help a bit alongside those assault rifles or something else. But Bite and Hold is sort of striking here and there. He's not really sort of bunching up into one sort of large force. He's sort of looking for the weak points. And sort of trying to overwhelm Hold that way. Panthers all moving up here. No pins on my machine gun, by the way. Shots firing, not quite connecting. And there you go. Kind of is a bit of trouble here with the submachine guns, the PPH 41s. Bit of action south there. We've got Stormtroopers coming in. Veterans here too. Much more lethal. Again, tactical advance there. Could maybe have done a bit good. But there you go. Force right here by the T-35. And it's high explosive rounds. Paul could consider maybe a Stug to support the Panzer IV for a bit more fire and the range. But he might of course just play for more Panzer IVs. Bite and hold is a bit further off from being able to get more armor. In particular, of course, he's been just playing for the T-Pet for he could himself get HS-76. Holy crap, Gallagher is what they were going to choose here. That was a nice strike. t felt about pulling away before getting knocked out by the pack. Probably got Storms from holding up here in the church. Panzer Sex would still be a good investment there, field for Paul. Can't escort their wipes, so both sides are suffering some slightly unpleasant losses to the other one. Stormtroopers going to do moving up once more for the Strachwitz Panzer Division. And bombing from the north. Most of the other troops are hanging back in the base, they're fighting hold for the time being. Comes to take heavy losses from the Panzer IV. His problem is still that T-3045. Against the Pan- Oh, exposing the sight there to the T-3045. That did definitely not help Paul. Definitely did not help. A little manpower there, looks like he might get the other Panzer IV then. He's definitely got the resources for it, so it would be an option there for Paul. Now the Constance sort of up north here, two squads leading the way. T-35 pulling back there, almost veterans who won. Molos is again forcing the gunners to band in the north. Mm, unit wiped out there. Looks like a grenadier squad. Blown to bits and pieces. And there you go, another Panther on the way. And there you go, a second T-35 drops into the fight and hold. Panther rushing into the cover to wreck it. Gets damaged. T-35 supporting. Whoa! Good hit in the building. Shot to a storm to a Monster is getting out of there. I mean, they're not really doing much good there except spotting me. And there's got more tanks moving up. And church collapsed. The troops are going down there on the Panzer IV, clearing up the crew. Paul AD there was a bit upset. I'm not really sure why he insisted on keeping the stormtroopers there when they're under fire from a tank, since they had nothing to deal with the tank. Anyways, it seems a bit upset. There we go. Tax assault going in here. I probably would have waited until he was, you know, a bit closer. And a bit more, you know, out of the cover. Still did a lot of damage. And much in. Another wipe here. There we go. Those stormtroopers have definitely picked themselves off. Three units. They're sort of, well, two of them probably. But there's one. The other one killed one. But that was, of course, gone. But still, two units wiped at least. A lot of kills there. Two heroes of Germany. Another Panther arriving as the other one limps back to the base. Replacement pioneers arriving for Paul as the other one's got, well, plastered all over the tank. In a less than lovely situation. Country when there is a stormtrooper, tactical advantage could hold them off, but then again, they are rather low in health. And Paul does retreat there. Victory point for the way, not looking good there for him. In fact, it's time for the mid game analysis. Counter situation is Paul is being out a bit there. He's getting more grenades to replace the ones he's losing, it seems. 
not considered quick time some assault rifle panzer gonna deal here for a bit more firepower on the move and go versus bite and hold maybe another pack 40 or something else more pioneers could also be an idea there or for example a fuel castle to further speed up any armor gains or maybe even try play for tier 4 and maybe some panthers there for Paul but he's got a decent amount of tanks though of course his opponent's got t 35s which are just a notch above the Panzer IV maybe not armor wise but gun wise they definitely got it a bit there and plus health wise in game so there's certainly a few threats there for Paul AD at the moment plus of course the conscripts just keep on pressuring Biden Hole though is suffering a bit there so it's not all bad there for Paul but still Panzer gonna deal or more stormtroopers might work out. In fact, getting some more stormtroopers, maybe equipping the Panzer Six would help a bit. With the armor, have some sort of back up the Panzer Force in that regard. Maybe also use the detection ability to sort of scout out their position, use the Panzer Force then to flank or something similar. Otherwise, getting some Stooks to sort of support them again with their higher rate of fire and their target weak point could also be of help there for Paul in the longer run versus the T 35s Otherwise, another option, though risky, would be playing for a Panther. But again, it would be risky, and considering the old situation, might not quite be worth it. But it could, if he pulls it off, though, solidify anything here versus Biden Hold. Biden Hold, though, bleeding out a bit, needs to be a bit more careful about that. He should maybe consider actually using his support weapon company, maybe getting a Maxim, maybe a Mortar, maybe a Field Gun, something unit, for example, to hold some of the points here a bit better. And that's really one of the problems Biden Hold is really only biting at the moment. I mean, the problem is with his force composition, it's not really good at holding anymore. I mean, Sap machine guns not exactly good for long range engagement, which rather means you no know, Paul just needs to move up rifle grenade or something else and basically he's won this. So now guy needs to get something and support them, either some maxims up on a mortar. Something to give him a bit of holding power. Otherwise, special rifle command, strafniki or snipers could also work out. Otherwise initiative six or initiative five to maybe support the T thirty fives could also be good. A pair of SN sixes could probably do him quite a bit. Fuel cases of course in that regard would also be a good move. A few more mines would also be able to help there. But there you go, let's see how this actually goes and what they actually do. T five to five minutes. Stormtroopers almost wiped out. That would be a tragic loss right there for Paul. But there you go, he did get them. And that was definitely one terror less there than the bite hole. Those stormtroopers definitely caused him quite a bit of grief. Might see one T-35 be knocked out. Molotov going off, but can he get off a shot there? There we go, T-35 cooked apart. Got the pack 40 there cleared out. T-35 rolling about, hit the Panther 4 from behind. Panther about to get knocked out. Other Panther for the range of support. Then might get off a Panther first hit. And we got breakthrough. Panther 4 got abandoned though. Which also means he's just wasted the fuel on this a bit. Since the other one can't really break through either with a damaged engine. So they what is all this fuel being used for? Black market. Oh, is that bad? Yeah. But we get something to eat. Most of their best are gonna deal it. Either way though, I mean at least the Panther 4 here isn't a complete waste. It just needs to be fixed up again, then can join in the fight once more. T fed up over there, closing in on Vetri too, that'll definitely give Paul a bit of a headache. Infantry losses though keep piling up on both sides. In fact, both sides have taken heavy casualties and are barely holding on. And there you go. Blitz creaking it forwards. Looks like he's been a bit aggressive in trying to catch that T fed of her five. Take advantage of its low health, and there we go. Plus, of course, the fact that the T-35 is a bit of a veteran, of course, also means the Panther has a chance of getting more veterans here. Faster, of course, putting it faster on track for veterans here, too. Getting engineers, of course, one thing to remember, of course, is with this doctrine, he can repair using just the conscripts. I mean, that could open up instead of just getting all those engineers. That, of course, is something to remember. Oh, stole the pack away there from Paul. That is going to hurt. That is going to hurt. Got a strike here versus the Grenadiers up north. No further stormtroopers, it seems, or no Panzer Grenadier, which also could be a good move there for Paul. Either way, a bit more elite infantry than the Grenadier. There we go. Panzer fall back in the fight for the fatherland. Ready 
Gonna be a good go for the cutoff and deny Barton Hole more fuel. The Barton Hole is actually closing in against another pair of T35, so again, something else to support them. Interesting enough, Paul is not getting any machine guns there for his panzers. He's just spamming grenadiers on the other hand. I really think he should maybe consider something other than just, you know, just grenadiers. There you go, cut off, taken. There's probably Oh, can't survive the bunch time out in the open. Careful! Tulaish and dead Tulaish. There we go. Taught! That was a bit silly there by Baden Hoban. Of course, he wasn't paying attention either way, though. They got turned into prey there for the Panzer IV. Panzer IV moving ahead. We have 100 points remaining. Enemy forces are securing our. Nasty hit there from the Panzer IV. More kills for Deutschland. We got the Panzer IV sneaking up behind. And he's blitzkrieging. Looks like a quick armor grade here by Paul. Quick blitzkrieg strike. Maybe he's been looking for the Katrusha or something else. There he goes. Fires. There we go, nice use of Blitzkrieg. Quick hit and run there through Bidenhold's territory. Gaining eventually two on the Panther 1, cruising up. Of course, here the uh, rear is exposed, so it might get knocked out here. It looks like the Pack 40 wasn't quite able to sort of predict the path. And there you go. Panther 1, oh damn, it's end yet, but still, it's driving, it's driving. And it's got Churton. Other Panther 4 moving up to cover the retreat here. Valiantly done there by Paul as the T-55 strikes in, Veteran 2 2. Panther 4 though needs to get further away from the front line though. And he's moving up with a Panther Faust, he's really doing his best to ensure the Russians can hunt him down. I mean, that'll definitely be a harsh blow there to Paul, which could be sort of his defeat. Panther 4 there almost knocked out, still got plenty of kills there for the right. Uh, and he's getting to building about to collapse. Get out the back door. Got Kennedy's flank in supporting. Pioneers as well, though not really helpful there. And that was one Katrusha down there, full bite and hold. Nicely done there by Paul, though a bit risky, but it did pay off. It did pay off, otherwise he could have used Breakthrough as well for sort of that speed increase there as well. He could even use to sort of then cut off some territory from bite and hold while he was at it. But there you go, additional T-35 to arrive. Also got a quick Sturmwick attack there prepared now as well. Getting pack 40s and getting a mortar now. Granada we have to support there. Ready for yes, there we go. Mortar crew arriving. The Granada in there. And then he can use a tank through the conscripts. And conscripts heading northwards. Find hold, they'll be striking here and there. He's never just so, you know, mindlessly getting railroaded, just trying to counter attack one point. He's always trying to suss out where Paul is weak and sort of strike him there. Currently trying to overwhelm and cut him off. So that's overall not badly done there. Paul would benefit himself from maybe some bunkers coming to the flanks. MD 42, so a half track filled with assault troops could also work out quite well in that regard. There you go, that's 22 pounds already. Country up north here facing off versus the Grenadier, 40 kills by the way. There's definitely an iron cross or two there. Looks like we've got that Panzer 4 heading north, we also got the T-35 striking north there. Almost got three 3 there. Panda 4 moving in, need to be careful though. Oh dear, careful there, careful. No, no. Ah. There we go, re exposed, but also, just as importantly, at that range, the armor bonus is pretty much negated, in particular with the Venture 3, you can just shoot so fast. So that was a rather bad move there by Paul, and that rather resulted in his veteran Panzer there getting absolutely wrecked there, plus getting that T 35 there, Venture 3. 
The other pants for all their Blitzkrieg. I mean, he's really fond of using Blitzkrieg for offensive maneuvers, which, by the way, is nice to see. And there you go, he got it, but he's being a bit reckless here. And there you go, the other team fell focus up there. And to tank grenades, Gogol Clan is moving in with a Panzer Fast, but he might lose his other Panzer Four here. We've seen Breakthrough now being utilized in an attempt to get it out of there. Didn't quite well, like, he actually got plenty of fuel there. Part of me might actually then think, you know, a play for Panthers might have been, you know, slightly wiser in the longer run here. Pack Forge are moving ahead. Pioneers coming in the T-Fed 5, the T-Fed 5 rolling back. Got the Pack Forge getting out there as well. Little troops here reinforcing. Pack Forge being pushed forward in an attempt to deal with that T-3045. There we go, shot fire. Down to half health, but we'll still escape here. The wrath of the Wehrmacht. Will he just keep spamming up Panzer Falls? Will he go for something else? Just some Stooks, maybe to support them, or you know, tag up, go for a Panther, which again could prove to be what might help Paul win this. But seems like, to a certain extent, at least in some terms of force composition here, that Paul Eddie's got a bit stuck in a tunnel, if you will, at least mentally. Got the chief head for the being repaired, Pioneers pushed off at the conscripts down south. Despite having all these mind bulletins by the way, he's not really made much use of them. He's not really made much use of them whatsoever. A single mine down here and that's about it for example, no telemines or anything of course the question might be if you might not have benefited from another doctrine in or bulletins instead, not doctrine, but bulletins, you know, something for the Panzer Force we're using, or Grenadiers, or something like that. Contra's there, straight from a small gun to block here, sampled by Paul. Using the LMGs to basically sort of quickly get a wipe there. There we go. I mean, of course, spreading up with that counter assault and you basically losing units like that if you're not careful from time to time. Kendall sort them. Note he does spread out here. Even if he does attack and force, he doesn't just blob up, which is nice to see. We got cops going in here. Can they be cleared out? Bunker up here from Paul to help coat the center. Probably not the wise of the enemy again. Most like that, they would easily be cleared out. There's on the flanks there, a bit tricky to sort of deal with. The guys have been caught in the teeth of the field of fire. Rather blobbed up again, looks like Paul might be getting a bit frustrated here, a bit reckless. And he's just trying to rely on brute force to win this. He could actually assault in, well, Biden hurl wing. There we go, we got a Soda strike going in. Sturmovic flying in for the north. Quick retreat there, compelled. And Deep Hitfire crushing against the church. And we've got a supply break here by Paul, cutting off his fuel there. Looks like Paul is getting a bit desperate here. Interesting enough, he's just floating fuel now. Might actually now be too late to take up though, but instead getting some more armor might work out, but even then with two tanks out. Of course, several pack 40s now, by the way. He's seeing way more and more pack 40s there from Paul. Then he's in a bit of trouble. Might see another unit. Well, looks like the mortar crew here got cleared out. Oh dear. Things are falling apart here. Pack 40, Panther Faust. If you're not paying attention. Another Panther 4 there running for Deutschland. Lots of action. The enemy is taking our territory. And there you go, finally a Panther Faust against that T-35. Had he been able to do it down there, he probably could have the pack, been able to get the pack forward. Just wipe it out. We have 50 points remaining. But 50 points left here for Paul. The situation is not good. In fact, quite the opposite of good. And there you go. Another Panther four going to support the front line. We are losing a sector. Pioneers a bit of trouble with the T five fives. Our lines of supply are disrupted. We 
Capaldi really can secure points, but it is very much desperate and desperate at this point. And the ball trying to get some kills off there. Again, your knee is being torn apart here by the Panzer IV and its machine guns. Most of the it seems. Territory control is not looking good here for Paul. Beinhold, of course, is holding on reasonably well. Though a bit recklessly so at times. He's moving up pack four here to cover things up north. In fact, it looks like he's moving up both pack forwards here. Looks like he's expecting Paul to sort of strike north to sort of try and fix things there. In which case, of course, two pack forwards ready to sort of deal with the Panzer, of course, will help out quite nicely. For the time being, seems like he's not quite going there. Oh, there we go, Kennedy's moving ahead. More conscripts. More submachine guns. No H6 is can choose for anything like that. Looks like he might be seeing an assault going in here. Panzer Force spearheading gun it is rolling up, pack forty and there you go, pack forty is flying away. Veteran to one. Doesn't quite have the music there for a target recon could pretty much render that Panzer Four null and void. He might still do so. Wreckage. Oh shot there missed. He fell apart the two, but damage pack 40 firing weight, gaining venture to itself. Could get it for target weak here, but no. Neglects it. He fell apart the escapes. The enemy is taking our territory. And he's actually getting stormtroopers now here from the small shit appearing. I'm not entirely sure why I went exactly there, to be honest. Right in between all the Soviets and the tanks, that seems a bit um Silly. Might be able to get their T-35 here though. If he uses attack ground, just fires in the manual direction, but no. Decides against it. Pulls back. South sings and finding here versus conscripts. Conscripts are rushed off in the name of the fatherland. Got the Pentwall flanking on the T-35. So taking a bit of time there to sort of move forward, but gets behind the pack 40 there. And we got a Soviet pack forward there, moving up the Panzer Fort. Ah, shot either missed or failed to penetrate there, but looks like it failed to hit. At that range, not good, not good. Bears flanking in though, Paul here doing his best. We got another team Panzer here available though, we'll fight in the hole. Panzer Fort, almost out. Oh, tried to ram there, but seems like he cancelled it. There we go, Panzer IV joins the rest. One of our Panzers has been destroyed. Almost got the T-35 here repaired, but the Pack 40 is just shooting away. And there we go, Veteran to free, bad news for the crew. Gun is flanking in, and there we go, Matt Fates is off here with the Panzer Faust. Another T-35 there arrives though. There we go, T-35 knocked out. There's more running here on the battlefield, Pack 40 though, might go down. Despite how lead it is. Stormtroopers being hit, still not great for them either. Despite easily hanging munitions, no, no mind having the musical bow, but there we go, no longer. Getting Panzer Shreks now for them, I just feel it's a bit late at this point in the fight to get them Panzer Shreks. He would have benefited from it had he been sooner. Still, they might be able to do something, I suppose, but he's down to 26 points, he's getting another Panzer IV here. Getting another Panzer IV. And now he's actually sprinting here though without the Panzer Shrek. What are you thinking, Paul? Finally you sprint and then you don't really have the thing to need for it. Just wasting the Stormtroopers instead by the looks of it. That was a bit silly. And there we go, white. At least it was before the Panzer Shrek was upgraded, basically meaning he got the refunded, but it's probably not much of a consolation there for him. The Panzer Fort keeps getting thrown here into the meat grinder by Paul. 
But his situation is looking pretty bad at the moment. He does not exactly possess a lot of options at the moment as the victory point keeps going down. He's trying to get to flank. I mean, in that regard, you know, he's doing all right, but I do feel like, in terms of force composition, he might approach things poorly. And there you go, another break from I mean, he's making, you know, reasonably good use of his mobility, otherwise, most people don't use in some regards, but. There we go, Panther 4 lost. What lost a luck answer. person. Not entirely sure what he's talking about here. Demo charge wiping out his other grenadiers. 54 kills though. Oh, they better hope they don't get caught by the enemy though. Reinforcements complete. Otherwise, they might actually be held accountable. Well, it seems like Paul's getting a bit busy there. Might as well just speed this up then. You missed the victory points go down here. Don't think he's getting anything sort of sensible out of the last part of that. Pioneer is rushed off. And there we go. Game over. A loss here for Germany. A victory for the Soviet Union. Heavy losses on both sides for the Soviets to be able to see it through. Partly due to a better unit composition and slightly better tactics. I mean, for Paul, I rather felt like to a certain extent he didn't really make good use of his units and abilities at certain times. For example, the Stormtroopers, the second unit, you know, should have been upgraded faster with something. And that guy, you know, left himself a bit open there. But it's also the opening overall. He was a rather, you know, compared to what he was facing, and he probably wasn't quite expecting that, you know, a bit weak and be that sniper. And then the way he lost it quickly rather hurt him a lot. And that rather gave, but gave Button Hold a bit of a good advantage early, and he was able to sort of reasonably translate that. Um, Paul got a bit lucky, of course, he didn't go for the tank return to maybe rush out a T-70. Though rather, I mean, I do have to question if there's really much reason to just go for this for a single Katusha. I mean, he could have gotten more, or maybe some mission 6, something else supported, I think, would have worked out. And Bayern Hope would also benefit from fuel cash. But overall, reasonably nice play. But again, you know, with all the submachine guns, he was rather lucky that Paul didn't just get saved from some full bunches of panzer gun and more storms with the assault rounds or something else. I mean, that was a bit risky. They should have had something else to support those conscripts if it's going to go for all of them with assault submachine guns. I would think he Paul would also benefit from using more sprint except that one time. But as you know, use of breakthrough in theory, though they were really at any good times for sort of when he used it. But nice sort of aggressive use of Blitzkrieg. I mean, occasionally didn't fog up for him pretty well, but again, he should have used more than just Panzer fours and apart. I mean, Really think now here at the end, I mean, he might have benefited from taking up and going for Panthers. Might have given a bit more of a stronger position, would have forced Biden home then to maybe aim for some SUD 5 sort of, you know, supporting that way, which would certainly also take a bit of pressure off the infantry. But there you go. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave some ideas of your own for your own matches. If it did, you know, why not subscribe, tell your friends, or shout it, whether everyone want or not, you know, send a replay on the part, some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dainting. Cheers, and thank you all for watching. Bye.